Today we are going to be painting a bugbear, one of the classic D&D miniatures, and we're going to be doing things a little bit differently this time. Uh, the first obvious one is that we are starting with white primer, or to be more specific, white sprayed over black primer. Uh, the reason for that is I have some larger projects coming up uh, that need a light colored primer and uh, I need the practice. I haven't worked with lighter color primers for quite a while and also there are different techniques that we can use with lighter colored primers. Our first base coat for the skin is Vallejo Model Color Green Ochre. Our green ochre is our base coat rather than the darkest shade like I normally do when we start with a dark primer. Uh, so after our base coat, I am applying the shade now as a wash. We have a mix of Vallejo Game Color Beastie Brown mixed with some glaze medium to create a wash. And it's very thick and we're applying it very heavily over the entire model. Just to avoid any confusion, some people have had uh, problems understanding why I'm using a glaze medium here, thinking that it's a glaze that we're doing right now. That's not true. Uh, the important part of that product, the name of that product, is the medium actually, not the glaze portion of it. Uh, because we're using it in a different quantity and uh, a different style, we're using it as a wash, so you can kind of just ignore the glaze part of it. And in fact, you can use a gloss medium or a matte medium if you prefer. Uh, I just really like the glaze medium, it works better for me. When that is dry, we apply a second wash. Uh, this time, Vallejo Model Color Flat Brown mixed with some glaze medium. And this is a darker wash and it's a little bit thinner and I'm being a bit more precise with the application here, applying it in the areas where I want a bit more shadow and not doing an overall wash here, just increasing the depth of some of the shadows at this point. Now we go back with our original green ochre to do a little bit of cleanup work. That first layer of Beastie Brown that we added, uh, it settled in the recesses but also tinted some of the base coat areas, which is what we wanted because now we can use the green ochre once again, the pure green ochre, and use it as a highlight color, reapplying it to areas where we want to bring it back up to its original color. So using the Beastie Brown, we have that in the recesses as a shade color, we have the tinted green ochre tinted by the beastie brown as another color and now we have the pure green ochre so we've gotten three shades using just two colors our next highlight color is our green ochre mixed with some vallejo model color buff uh, the buff has a slight amount of green in it which makes it a really good highlight color uh, and this color is thinned and we are doing several applications to slowly bring up the color. I am putting a lot more effort into a Bones figure and this D&D series than I normally do because um, frankly I wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to uh, take my time and uh, paint something in a higher standard rather than doing uh, a quicker paint job. So. Uh, this is going to take a little bit longer, and of course, if you want something faster, you can skip a few of the highlighting steps or use thicker paint. For our next highlight color, I've mixed in some Vallejo Game Color Dead White. Uh, didn't want to mix in any more buff because the tone is a little bit different than the green ochre, and I think it started looking a little bit odd. So uh, we just have a small amount of white here, and you can see we are just adding a little bit of sheen on some of the upper highlight areas, very small areas where we're applying this to. Now we're gonna add a little bit of color to the miniatures. Some areas we wanna add some more uh, shade colors, different colors like um, 
underneath the eyes we can add a little blue or in this case what i'm doing here uh, adding a little bit of red to the nose and also the ears uh, because they're going to be a little bit more uh, see-through than an arm or what have you so i've mixed up a uh, it's a mix of our original vallejo game color beastie brown and i mixed in some model color 926 red and this is extremely thin mixture this is a actual glaze here and just very carefully adding several layers, letting them dry between each coat, uh, just to add a little bit of color to the inside of the ears and the nose. For some additional color in the recesses and the shade areas, uh, I'm glazing on some Vallejo Model Color Violet Red. Uh, this is gonna add a little bit of color to those areas and uh, move us slightly away from our very yellow skin tone. Uh, as you can see, the paint is, once again, made to a glaze. It's very, very thin. You can see it on the palette there. And just carefully applying it in the recessed areas to add a bit more color. For the bulging veins on his arms, we are using a mix of our green ochre mixed with some Vallejo model color royal purple. And uh, I always hate painting veins on arms because logically your, your brain tells you to highlight those areas, but actually they need to be dark because those veins uh, look darker on at least a human being. So uh, I just went a slightly dark, just try to add a little bit of color to them and where needed a little bit of highlight by adding a bit more buff to that mixture. Uh, definitely want to keep it very subtle regardless. I decided to go for a somewhat ginger bugbear for some reason, can't tell you why. Uh, perhaps a slightly darker fur might be more appropriate, but uh, it's always fun to experiment. Uh, for this, we are using Game Color Beastie Brown once again, and that's mixed about 50-50% with Parasite Brown from the Game Color range. To highlight it, we are using some Vallejo Game Color Plague Brown, very delicately dry brushed on. And you have to remember with hair, uh, when it comes in, where it comes in contact with human skin, uh, that in addition to the regular highlight areas, uh, those areas are where the, it's going to be lighter because the hair starts to thin out and some of the flesh color starts showing through. So we don't just want to highlight uh, the top portions where the sun hits like we normally would. We also want to highlight those areas as well. We're gonna shade the hair, or fur, what have you, uh, using some ink washes. We have a mix of Vallejo Game Color red and brown ink, very thin, and this is going over a majority of the fur. I'm just leaving it off some of the highlight areas that we uh, painted earlier. And then for our second layer, we have a three color mix. We have black ink, we have brown ink, and also I've mixed in a little bit of game color charred brown. And this color is for the recesses. You can see going straight down the back. Uh, the charred brown mixture is to, uh, paint tends to uh, stick more to the surface, uh, as opposed to if we just used inks here, it would just you know run into the recesses. So uh, I wanna paint this on and I want it to darken some of the surface areas, especially uh, around the shade where I want the whole area darkened or around that uh, back where the hair sprouts from. So uh, that's the reason why we have a three color mix here. It's We want not just necessarily a darker color, but we want a color that also sticks well to our surface. So that pretty much takes care of the fur and the hair on our bugbear. Join me in part two where we'll take care of the other bits of our buggy bear. Uh, the armor and the wood and some of the leather and what have you. Uh, so yeah, check that out soon and as always, thanks for watching. Haha, <laughs> the fun never stops when you're clean and tidy. <laughs>